Yes, according to your witcher, oh valley of plenty, oh valley of plenty, oh. Yes, yeah. according to your witcher, a friend of humanity. <laughs> So yeah, The Witcher season two is coming, and in all honesty, I'm excited. I after what we got for season one, a version of the a version of it of The Witcher that I didn't think we would ever get a live action Witcher that was good because I know that they did one previously, <clears throat> and it was not the best. And then of course the video games came out and blew everyone away, especially the third one. But now it would seem that uh, Netflix is taking the production of The Witcher seriously. And albeit, you know, even though production was delayed because of COVID, because, hey, ain't that just the thing. Uh, The Witcher Season 2, the production has begun, and it is on its way. And in all honesty, I can't wait. I really cannot wait to see what's going to happen. Uh, And (laughs) now that... Geralt is... Oh, yeah, when we last left off, I was talking about, like, well, I'm going to have to go play the Witcher games now. So, for an update on how that went, I got, like, three chapters into the first game. Mm -hmm. And then got really, really stuck because everything was whipping my ass. Apparently, you have to grind a lot in the first game if you really want to do well at it. And I hate grinding in video games, so I've taken a break. Well, and that's why... I've not got past the first game still. Well, and that's why a lot of people have gone to say that, you know, the best thing to do for The Witcher... Like, if you have trouble with the first game, just go straight into the second one. Because the second one is a lot more balanced. But the thing is, is there are choices that persist through all three games. And if you want to actually see what those choices are and make them yourself you either have to watch multiple people's playthroughs online where they've made all the different choices or play it yourself so you know what choice you would have made in that situation yeah true but so but overall because the witcher 1 save actually transfers on pc to the witcher 2 and then everything you've done in those games that matters gets asked of you when you start the witcher 3 and you get to answer questions that you won't really know how to answer unless you played those two games already well that's fair, but eh, a lot of people... They did the same thing in Mass Effect uh, with the Mass Effect trilogy. Needless to say, though, uh, the Witcher franchise uh, is in a bit of a high place because, you know, the games are still very well beloved. And now the, the Netflix show, after the first season, took off. And I've still seen people talking shit after we watched the first season of this. Why? If, if you have had people lie to you and tell you that this is like a really social justice worry, like ruined by the left wing, like series, they're fucking lying to you. Look, they're wrong. I, I, you need to watch this and give it a chance. If I know there's people the out there who talk about it's the casting good, of Yennefer man. and the casting of Yennefer, which here's the thing. I don't care. The actress does a good job. Yeah. Like, I mean, Yennefer, and, and number one, she's beautiful, which Yennefer's also beautiful. And also, didn't Yennefer start out as a club foot, hunchback, slack jawed, you know, you know, work, you know, freak of nature that after doing the blood, after, you know, doing, you know, the adjustments and everything turned into this, this goddess of a human, be- or of, a, of a witch. And now she's, I mean, honestly, dude, as long as they keep telling the story in a good way and they keep Yennefer interesting, which the actress who plays her does a damn good job. I mean, I don't get it, man. People people want to say whatever they want to try and fulfill, like, some sort of just like, oh, you don't watch a show. Uh, it's it, it does this and it does that. It, it's like, don't get me wrong. Like, I fucking hate Netflix. Like, oh, I, I, I had my problems. They're scumbags. Like, but this is one thing they have going for them that's like actually worth checking out i will say that is true yes uh this and stranger things and castlevania the which queen's gambit well, queen's gambit as well yeah. is also really good there's there's good shows on netflix it's just you They've gotta just done steer through a lot of the crap things, yeah, so. but witcher season two uh has officially been in uh, well it's, it was announced a long time ago but the first trailer for it is officially here so let's go ahead and give this a watch and see what happens here we go so, I'm your destiny. <laughs> You're much more than that, Cirilla. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. I need to understand some things. The world okay. is changing. Sentra isn't safe for you anymore. What exactly is care we're in? Ooh. Yes. Go home. Finally. <laughs> That's exciting. Who the hell are you? Sometimes I feel so afraid. Yes. Burn the whole world. Facing your fear is not easy, but I am here for you. Training. Turning her into the what new, say, the next breed run. of Witcher. <laughs> you run. When I say hide, we have to stay. You hide. Run! Bessemir said that the world outside these walls is a dangerous place. But you can find power and purpose. Where is she? What if your prince is more than you barking for? Are you sure you're ready for this? Hell yeah. Damn. Welcome back. Hey, there <laughs> she is. It looks like they are kind of going to try to uh, basically make the show lead up to the events that took place at the beginning of the first Witcher game. Well, and that's the thing. You see, that's where the books were. The books did all of that. The books... Mm -hmm basically led or were all like prelude to the game and the game was developed with the author you know he basically helped them with development just like how uh uh pondsmith has helped with the development of cyberpunk 2077 for it to all work narratively as with you know the cyberpunk games and the lore that has been built up beforehand and you see i love this dude i i love the fact that you know we're keeping we're keeping you know mystery to all this we're not seeing everything that's going on and i love that and also i just like the just, idea of getting to see stories from the books even if they're not exactly like the books you know? no no there's changes um, that are made of and course. then also seeing it in live action that has clearly taken a look at the games before making this live action version so, like, we're not getting something completely unfamiliar from what we've already seen in the games. No. And that's just really neat. Like, him fucking doing the sword bet while balancing on the poles, you yes. know? Yes. Like, that's in the beginning of The Witcher 3. You see Siri doing that exercise. Yeah. And, like, you care more in, like, you've seen it in the beginning of The Witcher 1 and The Witcher 3. And it's, like, a very obviously known place to even the people who have barely played the games like me well dude yeah care more and i mean that's that is yeah. i mean it's, so it's basically the home home base of the witchers things, like come to life in a show like this yeah and i and, and it's exciting too because <laughs> live action stuff messes up a lot by trying to recreate the exact same parts of a story that you've already seen in other places yeah and doing it fucking wrong Whereas this is giving us the stories that we've not seen in the games. It, and we're not just getting like a, re a retelling basically of what happened in the games. Like, and it's a retelling of the books, obviously, but we've never seen those brought to life before now. So I yeah, think it's just I, very cool that they're doing this. Again, dude, just the fact that this exists and that it is actually good is to me a great step in the right direction and and plus like i said i think before I when we know. watched the first season it's it's a good thing for them to be making something that can kind of replace the travesty that was the end of game of thrones which which that's weird that they had like the yeah, game of thrones it's advertising thing up here. game of thrones over at the side and it's just like it, given what it's happened like, from the last couple seasons of game of thrones it's just like ugh. cuz it's a similar level of fantasy as game of thrones in my opinion and some, having something that's still good after Game of Thrones shit the bed is nice, you know, it's just within that same genre. Yeah, and honestly, dude, that's the one thing with 
with this that I'm hoping we get we get I hope we get at least four if not five seasons of this if not more because I think there's plenty enough in the books for them to do uh, four or five seasons of this comfortably but again hopefully of those four I would say at the very least a three season run would be nice at least but I would love to see four or five seasons of this because you know seeing Siri grow up all the way and just become you know just what she is in the third game just wow and also not only that the thing is is she's kind of missing like during the first game from what I've seen so far well she's not even been mentioned so far um, that I've played in it really and there's a reason for that but you'll find it out but uh, you'll find it out if you finish the first game but I honestly just for me just seeing that and seeing and hopefully they they treat series growth in this game as something that is as something as it was and not what because here's the thing this is what always gets me is whenever they skip hardship and the person is just immediately badass. It's just like all these, like... Mary o- Sue, in other words. Huh? Mary Sue characters. Well, OP pro tags in anime are always my biggest thing. I hate... Like, I-, I hate that so much. And that's all you see anymore. Oh, the main character's OP. Main character's like a god tier of magic that's never been seen before. Or the hero is, you know, super tough and, you know, has never... Really bad. Like, when that's played for comedy, that's okay. But when you're trying to tell a serious story, but yet the hero doesn't even have to go through any hardship, I mean, that's the reason why I love Geralt. Geralt is, like, he gets his ass kicked sometimes. And you know what? It's great storytelling. Geralt faces, like, all kinds of different kinds of shit. Like, yeah. And I that's mean, just like, you know. For one thing, like, you have to go through the trials to actually become a witcher that's apparently, like, hellish. Oh, yeah. I mean, for another thing... You change like, yourself, You're dude. fighting against things that will undo most people if they come across them. For another thing, you're facing actual, like, racism and shit because people don't understand people don't like them you. and they're scared. They're xenophobic of witchers. Well, of course, because witchers are considered, like, altered humans. They're considered, uh, like, uh, basically A lot of people sub-human. think they're just as much monsters as the monsters they hunt. Yeah, so. and that, to me, it's... Uh, again, you know, dealing with stuff like that, you know, with actual, like, social issues, I mean, it's good to confront it, and it's good to talk about it, uh, but at the same time, it's just like, I mean... Even it, the they games do a good, do job, a good of job of making him seem like a badass that is also still not overpowered, because, yes, he's badass and that he can kill these monsters, but also he has to prepare and do everything very strategically in order to not die. Well, yeah. It's not just like he can waltz in and kick ass anytime he wants in any situation, like, without getting his ass handed to him. Like, he has to really be smart and think about how he's gonna do things. Yeah. Prepare properly ahead of time and stuff. And that's, and honestly, that's that is something that I think they portray in this show very well. They portray like, his preparation to fight the, uh, what was it? Striga. Yeah, the Striga. Thank yeah. you. To fight the Striga. Setting up, like, the traps and stuff. Yes. It was be- it was brilliant. Like, I uh, loved it. Locking himself in the coffin to drink the potions and recover. And mm-hmm. it, it's great. I loved it. I love the fact like, that... Like, whenever that, you, you see stuff go, go wrong, I love uh, his version, like, you know, because just the fuck. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, uh, someone actually pointed out in the comments here is just like Gerald had more lines in this trailer than he did in all of season one, <laughs> which is kind of true. But at the same time, Gerald is a man of few words. Season one, we're just fuck. <laughs> yeah, but just like it, it's like fuck, Roach, and just like shit like that. But yeah, this was good. One. This was a good one. I like this. So, what did y'all think? Hopefully, you all are excited for The Witcher Two, season two. Uh, I know we are. I mean, I can't wait to watch it. And uh, yeah, I guess until next time, everyone. Signing off. I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you, everybody. Peace out.